Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at all the different types of limits on bank lending as a form of regulation to protect against bank failure, to protect against systemic risk, full financial sector collapse that is. Uh, in this video what we're going to do, we're going to look at all the different ratios available for example, all the different requirements available for example to limit bank lending, to protect against bank failure and systemic risk. We're going to look at um, the ratio, the equation for example, how to interpret the figure, what kind of regulation can be imposed, the intention of the regulation, but also we're going to look at Basel recommendations. You need to know a little bit about the Basel Agreement. The Basel Agreement are just rules, they're regulations, they're limits on bank lending, regulatory frameworks basically, to help prevent uh, something like the 2008 financial crisis happening again. So they are recommendations decided by industry experts who met in Basel who formed this committee uh, to help prevent uh, something like 2008 happening again. And a lot of their recommendations were over things like capital ratios, liquidity ratios, leverage ratios, for example. We're going to look at those, uh, exactly what those recommendations are. Now, they are only recommendations because the Basel Committee themselves, these experts themselves, do not have any international power to enforce these regulations on countries around the world. No, they are just voluntary recommendations. So it's up to international um, governments themselves whether they want to enforce them. What you need to know is that the European Union, for example, have decided to take those recommendations and actually enforce them as financial market law, as actual regulation. For example, the PRA in the UK must monitor whether these regulations are actually being met or not. So they have actually been enacted as EU law. The UK, for example, will follow them. So yes, they're only recommendations, but now you know that they are part of EU law, thus they are part of UK law, whilst we remain part of the European Union. So any kind of recommendations that apply for these ratios or requirements, I will talk about as well. Let's get started by looking at the cash ratio. Here is the equation for the cash ratio. We divide cash assets as part of the balance sheet by current liabilities. Remember, current liabilities are short-term liabilities, your deposits, your short-run borrowing in the balance sheet of a commercial bank. So I've written a little uh, mock uh, balance sheet here, just isolating the two parts that would actually be considered in this equation. So the two assets, which count as cash assets, or cash themselves, and also reserves of the Bank of England. Uh, you've also got liabilities here, short-term liabilities of deposits and short-run borrowing. So what we do, we divide our cash assets of so £20 million by our current liabilities, £100 million, and that gives us the cash ratio. In this case, we've got 0.2 or 20%. So what this tells you is, for every pound worth of liabilities that you have to pay, how much cash do you actually have? So for every pound of liabilities that this commercial bank owes, they've got 20 pence worth of cash assets to pay that off. So the regulation would be to maybe impose a cash ratio if one doesn't exist already, or to raise it if it does. The intention of doing this is to prevent a liquidity crisis, to make sure that a bank will always have enough cash, basically, to pay any short-term liabilities that it owes. So if 20%, for example, is deemed not good enough, maybe they can raise it to 30%, whereby a bank must keep more cash assets to pay its short-term liabilities to prevent a run of the bank, to prevent liquidity crisis, and therefore to prevent bank failure and reduce the chance of systemic risk. Uh, the Basel recommendation of a cash ratios, none apply. Basel recommendations are over liquidity ratios, capital ratios, and leverage ratios. Let's now have a look at liquidity ratios. So let's look at a liquidity ratio here. Here is the equation to work out a liquidity ratio. You've got your current assets, divide those by your current liabilities, that is your short-term assets, divided by your short-term liabilities. There are four assets that count as short-term assets, i.e. current assets. Cash, reserves of the Bank of England, money on short notice, so that's any interbank lending, um, and any short-term investments as well. So they're the four short-term, highly liquid current assets, and they're your two standard short-term liabilities. So if we take our numbers here, you've got 80 million pounds worth of current assets, you've got 100 million pounds of short-term liabilities, current liabilities, and that will give you a liquidity ratio of 0.8 or 80%. So what could the regulation be here? Well, maybe to impose a liquidity ratio if it doesn't exist already, um, or to raise it. What is the intention of that? Well, again, is to prevent a liquidity crisis. So this is a little bit more developed than the cash ratio, whereby you can have slightly less liquid assets included as well, so money at short notice and short-term investments, whereas the cash ratio was just your immediate cash assets. Uh, but the idea is that these are still very highly liquid, so 
In case you need to pay back any of your short-term liabilities, you will have enough liquid assets to pay it back. That's the intention, to make sure the bank has got enough liquidity to pay back any short-term liabilities to prevent the risk of a bank run, to prevent the risk of a liquidity crisis. That's the idea. So maybe if, let's say, that the PRA, the Prudential Regulation Authority, let's say, or even uh, the Basel Committee decide that maybe 80% is not good enough, they can raise it to 90% or even to 100%, whereby more liquid assets need to be held just in case short-term liabilities need to be paid immediately. What about the Basel recommendation? There is a Basel recommendation over liquidity ratios, and these are important to know. Over basic liquidity ratios, this is what was agreed. So from the 1st of January 2015, commercial banks would need to hold at least 60% uh, liquid assets, short-term assets, current assets, to meet their short-term liabilities, with the intention of raising that figure by 10% each year to January 2019, when that figure would become 100%. But there is also this liquidity coverage ratio, this one has really gained the headlines, whereby commercial banks need to have full coverage, so 100% liquidity, to cover any liabilities or short-term liabilities that are owed in 30 days or less. So any immediate liabilities that are owed that need to be paid in 30 days or less, in this case, you've got 100% liquidity to cover that. That is a recommendation of Basel, that's a liquidity coverage ratio that is now enacted in EU law and now in UK law as well. So good to know that, that will really help you get top marks in your essays if you're able to quote that. Let's now uh, move on from liquidity ratios and look at reserve requirements. So the reserve requirement. The reserve requirement is simply the fraction of deposits that must be held at the Bank of England. So when deposits are put into a commercial bank, how much must be kept at the Bank of England and therefore how much can actually then be loaned on to individuals and thus spread around the economy. Well, let's say it's set at 10%, so that is a reserve requirement. It means that if 100 million pounds worth of deposits are put in a commercial bank, then 10% at least must be kept as reserves at the Bank of England. So that's at least 10 million pounds. This will meet the reserve requirement there. So the regulation could be to impose it. There isn't this regulation at the moment in the UK. It's deemed to be quite restrictive over bank lending and restrictive over bank activity. So it doesn't yet exist. So maybe to impose it, if it does exist, to raise it. So if we're not happy with 10%, make it 20%, uh, whereby £20 million at least must be kept at the Bank of England if £100 million worth of deposits are put into the commercial bank. And the intention, again, is for liquidity, to make sure that the bank has got enough liquidity in case depositors come back and want their money back, in case there are any uh, short-term lenders to the commercial bank that want their money back. So the idea is to prevent or to reduce the risk of a liquidity crisis, of a bank run, and thus a bank failure in that sense. There is no uh, Basel recommendation here at all over reserve requirements. However, in the USA, the Federal Reserve have imposed a 10% reserve requirement. The Federal Reserve have got the power to change that. They're in control over this reserve requirement to increase that, to decrease that, whatever they want to do. Even to scrap it completely, they have got the complete control over the reserve requirement. It's a bit more complex in the USA, but for banks of a certain size, it stands at 10%. So we've seen three different types of limits over bank lending there to help reduce the chance of a liquidity crisis and therefore a run on the bank. Uh, we're now gonna look at two different ratios that can help reduce the risk of insolvency and thus a bank failure in that regard. Let's start by looking at the capital to loans ratio. The capital ratio, here is the equation for the capital ratio. You've got the total level of capital divided by the loans issued by a commercial bank. So if we take this uh, look at the balance sheet here, magnifying in, focusing in on just the core parts of a balance sheet that we need and the figures that I've given here, you'll see we've got 15 million pounds worth of capital and 100 million pounds worth of loans. Loans, remember, are advances on the balance sheet. So 50 million pounds divided by 100 million pounds worth of loans gives you 0.15 or 15%. What does that mean? That means that for every pound that is issued as a loan by the commercial bank, they've got 15 pence worth of capital there. So you can see this ratio is very important to see the health of a commercial bank in, the, in terms of how much capital they have to offset any potential losses in loans. Now bear in mind that not all loans issued are gonna be really risky, uh, are gonna be really dodgy, are gonna be at risk of going bad. So it's not like you need this to be you know, 100% or close to 100%, because a lot of the loans that a commercial bank issues will be absolutely fine, so bear that in mind as well. And also bear in mind here, uh, it can be specified which loans are included in this capital to loans ratio. 
We'll come back to that in a second. So, what regulation can be used? Um, well, we can impose a capital ratio or we can raise the capital ratio. If you raise the capital ratio, what does that mean? Well, from 15 to 20 percent, it means that more capital will need to be held by the commercial bank uh, to protect against any potential losses in loan value. So, if we raise from 15 percent to 20 percent, this bank's got to make sure that they've got at least 20 million pounds worth of capital to offset any potential losses in loans. So imposing it or raising it. The intention is very simple, clearly, to protect against insolvency, right? Whereby a bank doesn't have enough capital to offset the value of any losses in loans. So uh, therefore to protect against that type of bank failure and potential systemic risk as a result of that. Is there any Basel recommendation? Yes, there is there is an 8% minimum capital to loans ratio that they recommend. Now, the problem with the capital to loans ratio, which is why it's kind of lost favour as a, a means of financial market regulation, is because of this. It's possible to specify which loans are included and which ones aren't. The problem with the capital ratio, which was used um, between 2010 and 2012, is that the ratio specified that things like mortgages and other more safe um, loans would not be included in the capital to loans ratio. The loans that would be included are only the really risky ones. So for example, loans to firms, loans to entrepreneurs. And loans that are deemed more risky, only those would be included in the capital to loans ratio. But the problem then is that you have many commercial banks who are singing their praises, meeting their capital ratio requirement, for example. But if their mortgage loans go bad, or their more safer loans go bad, outside of mortgages, they might still get into lots of trouble. So just because you're meeting your capital to loans ratio, if that ratio doesn't actually uh, take into consideration mortgages and other loans which could go bad, then you're not necessarily in a safe position. That's why the capital to loans ratio now is, is not necessarily the most used uh, financial market regulation that we see. What's more in favour is the leverage ratio, which is much more comprehensive. So therefore now, let's move into the leverage ratio, which is what uh, the Basel Committee favour much more now, as opposed to the capital ratio, and understand why that's better. The leverage ratio is more comprehensive than the capital ratio. If we look at the equation, we see why. It basically tells us how much the commercial bank is leveraging their capital when it comes to loans and long-term investments at the issue. So it takes capital, and divides that by the total loans and long-term investments that a commercial bank has on its balance sheet. All loans, crucially, in the leverage ratio here. You see the difference between this and the capital ratio, but also long-term investments. So if we look at our balance sheet here, um, we've got £15 million worth of capital there, and we've got £120 million of loans and long-term investments uh, right now. Crucially, it's all loans that will be considered here. So we take 50 million pounds and we divide by 120 million pounds, we get a figure of 0.125 or 12.5% leverage ratio here. And that means that for every one pound that the commercial bank has as an asset in terms of advances or long-term investments, they've got 12.5 pence worth of capital there. That's what it means. Um, so again, this is a very important ra ratio to help to guard against insolvency. What's the regulation that can be used? Well, to impose it, to make sure that a commercial bank has got enough uh, capital to offset any losses in long-term investments and in advances, i.e. loans. Uh, the intention is to prevent against insolvency, very much to protect against insolvency, to make sure that if any loans or any long-term investments go bad, the commercial bank will always have enough capital to offset those losses there. And again, remember what I said in my last video, it's unlikely that all long-term investments or all loans issued are going to go bad. So this ratio does not need to be set too highly because you would hope that the commercial bank is not making too many risky uh, loans. It's not uh, holding too many risky long-term investments here, whereby they would need to hold huge levels of capital to offset any potential losses in loans and long-term investments. So the number, if it's set lower, is not necessarily a problem. Uh, but the idea is to protect against insolvency, to protect against that type of bank failure and the systemic risk. So the regulation could be to impose it, or in fact to raise it. So if they feel like, in this case, 12.5% is too low of regulators, they can raise that to maybe 15%, 20%, whatever they feel is necessary to make sure that the commercial bank is holding enough capital to protect against insolvency. What's the Basel recommendation? Well, the Basel committee like leverage ratios because it's more comprehensive, it's more conclusive really. It's a, 
better safeguard against bank failure. And they say that a minimum requirement of 3% is adequate. Okay, so that is the Basel recommendation there for you. The leverage ratio, the reason why it's preferred over the capital to loans ratio or the capital ratio is because it is more conclusive. All loans will be taken into account, not just the risky loans like the capital ratio will include, for example, but also long-term investments. If we generalize this, guys, which we can, and we look at capital divided by total assets, again, it can be very comprehensive, this leverage ratio. So that's why the Basel Committee like it. That's why they use it now as their primary mode of financial market regulation alongside the liquidity ratios that we talked about before. That way, any runs on the bank protected against, liquidity crisis therefore protected against, and any risks of insolvency will be protected against as well. So that covers all the different limits over bank lending. Uh, very simple when you get your head around it, and very logical when you understand it. Great to use in your essays alongside this incredible A-star uh, type application here as well. Stay tuned for the next very, very important video. When we criticize, we look at cons of financial market regulation and also evaluation points. Lots to talk about there. I'll see you all in that video.